This video is to explain the class format of Bio 140 Human Physiology. In a separate video, I will go over the canvas shell. This class is a lecture and lab class. It meets twice a week. There's an hour and 25 minutes of lecture. This is mandatory. You need to come for it. Now, I'm not going to take attendance past the first couple of weeks, but you will fall behind or things will not make sense if you don't come to lecture. Then there's three hours and five minutes of lab class. You are responsible for coming to lab. Again, if you're sick, don't come. I will excuse sicknesses, the first couple of sicknesses, but you need to be in lab. For transferring, they pay attention to how much lab we have in the class. So this is actually very important. It adds up to the number of hours you need to transfer. So lecture. It's live and in person. Please come on time. I usually go over past material five minutes before class starts. Then at the beginning of class, I start to go over new material. Take active notes in lecture. Write down it, if I write down it, if I draw it, you should probably draw it too. Even if I'm writing chicken scratch, it's something important. And for each PowerPoint slide, try to come up with the key facet of it or the key feature of it. And if it doesn't make sense, ask questions. Did somebody say PowerPoint? I'll give you the full PowerPoint lecture. I used to have it cut out so students had to fill it in but I think it's better to give you the whole thing. And you can find the current one by this big, giant blue button if you go into the Canvas shell on a browser. I found that tablet users manage to sneak in without doing this. So click on there. Here's our first week. On Monday, we will cover chapter one and two. On Wednesday, we're gonna actually finish chapter two and start chapter three. Now you'll notice this is not like human anatomy where every th chapter nicely fit into one lecture. It doesn't happen that way in physiology. It's how the chapters were arranged in the book we used to use. Pleasant Hill still uses this book. And this is a legacy of that. And it doesn't really make sense because basically I would split this at inorganic chemistry and throw in cells at that. So it doesn't make sense to put those two together. So. The weeks will be like this, but here are the PowerPoint files. And each week, you'll click on the giant blue button, and it'll take you to that. But I'm nice. You can find the past ones in the weekly modules. I also have study guides. My goal is to put the study guides in by the time you get there. But combined study guides are on this page. So here is the study guide for lecture quiz one it's on chapter three lab quiz one that's our next test it's right here and the first lecture test it's here now on some of them it's made them really small and you could just download these to your computer now these are all word documents and what a lot of students do is they actually type in their answers as they go or, if I want to give you the pages for the Word document, just copy and paste it in to Word and answer them. So that's what a lot of students do to make sure they answer these questions in a timely manner. But don't forget about them. Go back over them and over them. So you need to be an active learner in this. We'll talk about tests and lecture quizzes and lab quizzes on separate pages. This is just the class overview. Lab is after lecture. There's about a 15 to 20 minute break. Sometimes I might give you a little bit extra break. Sometimes we might leave lecture early and start lab early. Lab is three hours and five minutes long. Though. The lab book is online. I'll have it several places in the orientation module. And you typically do the experiments in groups. Now you might just do one part of the experiment. You might do the whole experiment. Now, for some of the experiments, you do it right there. You'll upload it on the computers right there. Others, you'll have to go home and do a graph and write a conclusion form. I'll show you how to do the graphs. I'll 
tell you exactly what to write for the conclusion. It's not stressful, but because I want you to get into the habit and learn how to do proper write-ups, this part, graphing and the conclusions, will be done at home. And because of this, the labs are not due until the next class, except for three of them. And those three are special projects that, again, I will talk about on another slide. So several of them, you don't even have to worry about turning in. It's turned in when you finish the lab at the end of class. Now, I mentioned class is nine hours long. So you should expect somewhere between 18 and 27 hours of studying for that. The formula is you take the number of hours the class meets a week, you multiply it by three. So I recommend making study groups. There are study rooms in the Ask Center. That's the single story building in the center of campus. There's only three buildings, it's hard to miss. It's the only single story one. And go over past material, explain concepts to each other. Write things out on whiteboards. I learned glycolysis and the Krebs cycle by writing it out 5,000 times. And keep up on the studying too. The class goes pretty fast. It goes just like anatomy. So you need to stay up on the material. Study something every day. So plan to put two hours a week, a day, to study. So that is the class format. I'll explain Canvas and lectures and quizzes on different videos. Thank you.